I work with and have worked with many, many women that think that the diet piece is the most important. And if they could just figure out their diet, then they would start losing weight. I don't see that consistent with anything that I've seen over the last 15 years working with women. Hey, my name is Leanne Vogel. I'm fascinated with helping women navigate how to eat, move, and care for their bodies using a low-carb diet. I'm a small-town holistic nutritionist turned three-time international best-selling author turned functional medicine practitioner, offering telemedicine services around the globe to women looking to better their health and stop second-guessing themselves. I'm here to teach you how to wade through the wellness noise to get to the good stuff that'll help you achieve your goals. We're supporting your low-carb life beyond the if-it-fits-your-macros conversation. Hormones, emotions, relationship to your body, workouts, letdowns, motivation, blood work, detoxing, metabolism. I'm providing the tools to put your motivation into action. Think of it like quality time with your bestie mixed with a little med school so you're empowered at your next doctor visit. Get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn about your body and how to care for it better. This is the Keto Diet Podcast. Hello, today we're going to be talking about New Year's resolutions, how to change your body, how to set up your year. But I also want to talk about how just approaching this as like a new year, new you may not be the best way to go about change. In my personal experience, if I'm waiting a long time before I start going on something, I usually don't have the best intentions. And so in this episode, I also want to cover like how to set goals and how to set goals that stick. And the biggest part to setting goals is understanding why you want to do this. And I can tell you from personal experience, fitting into the size whatever it is that your dream dress, your dream jeans that you haven't fit into since you were in your 20s or whatever it is, is usually not enough. So I've shared this story a little bit on the podcast previously when it came to why I started working out. And I want to reiterate this kind of in this conversation only because I think it it provides a really good example of a successful goal setting versus a superficial goal setting. So you can really, as you start planning out your year, Not only do you have tools, but you also have like a really firm foundation to build upon when it comes to the reason why you're wanting to change your body. And so I named today's episode How to Change Your Body in 2024 because it's absolutely possible. I've been blown away at the progression that I've made over the course of the last year and a half working out consistently, but I'm also can be very discouraged because a year and a half of working out consistently, I would think that my progression would be more. And I always have to check myself with reality because I think a big part of setting goals is understanding what's real and what's not. And most of the stuff we see on social media of like 30 day juice fasts and look, I went keto and lost 80 pounds and now have a six pack. It's only been two months. It's just not realistic. So in conjunction with just understanding why you're doing this, it's also not setting yourself up for failure and perhaps even not setting an end goal. And the reason why I suggest this is because if it comes to changing your body in 2024, it's probably made up of a couple of goals eating probably somewhere along there of like diet, what you want to do with your food. Movement is probably a big part of that. The thoughts you think might also be a big part of that. And these things take time. I still haven't, I'm wrestling with how to share my personal progression pictures of the really the massive changes that I've made over the last year and a half of working out. And I haven't figured out how to do it while glorifying God and not myself and just I find like sharing pictures of myself in a bikini like from a year and a half ago versus now there are some significant changes but 
Is it the physical aspect that I'm after? No. If it were just physical, I think I would have lost my mind because these changes that you're making diet lifestyle in conjunction with like brain function and just setting realistic goals. It takes a while, my friend. And so if you think to yourself, okay, 2024 is upon us. Let's lose 20 pounds in the next six months. If you don't achieve that, or if you don't see come February, if you don't see that you're down a couple of pounds, you're going to get discouraged and peace out. And so when I was setting up my goals in 2022, this was just like a random July. Uh, My mother had gone through a significant health crisis for like the last two years. So from like 2020 to 2022, we were in and out of doctor's appointments. COVID was happening. So I couldn't go to Canada and like be there physically with her. It was such a challenge. Our whole family was trying to support through so much going on. And we finally got a diagnosis, which was a relief and direction, but also just another challenge. And I remember talking to my mom on the phone, kind of going through how we were going to manage this and what was going on and how we could support. I realized that so much of what I was telling her, I wasn't doing for myself. And this is always kind of a slippery slope, right? We want to care for ourselves enough that we can show up, but we don't want to obsess about ourselves that it like limits our life experience, right? And I've been there too of like declining invitations because it's at a restaurant and I'm nervous about what I'm going to eat and all of that. Or, you know, those sorts of things where your quote unquote healthy lifestyle becomes your life and nobody is really in your life because you're caring for yourself so much that you don't have a life anymore. Right. So there's like this pendulum swing and we need to find this healthy balance. And so I'm sitting there on the phone with my mom going through the things that she needs to do, you know, in her 70s as she supports her body through this next phase that we're all experiencing together and trying to support her with. And I realized like, I'm, I'm really not doing a lot of these things. Like for diet, I had it pretty dialed in, you know, I started the ketogenic diet when I was in in 2014, my goal was to get my period back. And after a year and a half of eating keto, I got my period back. After a couple of months from that, um, my hormones were regulated. And so my diet was really dialed in. And I was eating mostly keto at the time, having this conversation with my mom. And I just, I remember talking to her about muscle gain and movement and lifting weights. And I was like, I kind of like, don't do any of that. And if I'm being honest, I feel like I've I've gotten pretty like lazy. I started wearing like a, just a little pedometer on my phone. Like you can get a pedometer app, which I highly recommend everyone do because we have our phones with us all the time anyway. And it counts our steps. And I had always thought that I was a pretty active person. I was like, Oh, I'm probably close to like 8,000 steps a day. And then I get this pedometer and it's like maybe 2000 in a day. And I'm like, okay, I got some work cut out for me. And I think the thing with health is that sometimes, and I struggle with this also, like we think we're a lot better off than we are. And so being on this call with my mom, kind of going through some of these action items, I realized that there was just so much that I wasn't doing. And so I jumped on a scale just at the local gym and I was at 169 pounds. And I, I remember thinking like, the last time I got on a scale, I was 130 pounds. I don't feel like my body has changed that much, but (laughs) the scale is not broken. There, like there's some inconsistencies here. And I'd kind of just like, you know, I was just doing whatever. And so that became kind of my catalyst to be like, okay, if I'm telling my mom who is dealing with a chronic situation that she needs to do some key things to support her body, I should be doing these things too. And watching my mom struggle with building muscle, it became very important for me as a number one goal to just build muscle so that as I age, I can age gracefully and I can approach any sort of chronic situation that could come my way with a good, strong body. Because the biggest part for my mom's challenges has been that she doesn't have a lot of muscle and muscle is absolutely essential for many of these chronic issues. And so that really became my why. 
even when I'm at the gym and it is really challenging and I'm having a really hard lifting day, I think of my mom and it I just, it fuels me. I'm just like, I got, I got to get to it. If I'm telling my mom that she needs to do these things, I need to do these things. And so that I can show up for my husband and the people in my life as I age and I can be strong and I can um, be there for them with my body in some capacity. And so that goal has carried me over the last year and a half. I set this goal in August, 2022. I started walking a little bit. I started doing workouts in my little boat living room. We have about a three foot by eight foot space where I can work out. I got one set of dumbbells. I watched some videos on YouTube and I worked out twice a week and then three times a week and then four times a week and then five times a week. And when I got to six times a week, I was like, okay, Now it's time to go to the gym. That was February, 2023. And I've been going to the gym consistently since then. Like I will hit my one year anniversary of going to the gym in a couple of weeks and I've been consistent. And yes, there have been challenging days, weeks for sure. I've had to do a couple of deloads where my body is just tired and I don't want to work out and I'm just exhausted. And so I take a week off. I do other things. I've had a slight like knee injury situation that I've used a significant amount of collagen and cold therapy to support. But other than that, it's been pretty smooth sailing, I think, because I didn't set an actual physical goal. And that kind of brings me then to my results. So like I said, I jumped on that scale initially 169 pounds and I'm like, how, how did this happen? I'm 40 pounds heavier than I remember being. And it just, you know, it sneaks up on you. I know that you can relate to this of just, I don't know. I just wasn't thinking about it. It just, I guess, wasn't a priority for me. And I guess if I'm looking back, I was probably eating a lot more, I would go through periods where I wouldn't eat a bunch and then I would just eat a whole bunch. And it was a mixture of like, I think it was just eating way too much fat for my body. Truly. Like just, I remember tracking when I started tracking my food after working out for about four or five months, my fat was like 250, 300 grams a day, like just way too much for my body. And so I find that over the last year and a half of moving my body and shifting my diet, when I start to focus on the physical aspect, I am always disappointed. <laughs> I am always critical. I am I'm always in a bad mood. I have less motivation. But when I focus on a strength goal, like right, well, for the past four months, I've been really, really, really focused on doing my first (laughs) pull-up. I'm seeing progression. It's slow. But when you have a movement goal, like a strength goal, there's something like encouraging, like you want to go in and then see like how much closer am I? Not if you have a a scale goal, you're like, oh my goodness, I'm up, up two pounds and it totally ruins your entire week. And so I would encourage you as you set your goals up for 2024 that you think about why am I doing this? It's not enough for I've not met an individual that is highly motivated and and very consistent with their movement and diet when their goal is based on a physical aspect. And another piece, even if you do hit that, the motivation to stay there at that weight, at that strength, all the things that are going on is kaput. Like if you have a goal to get to a certain weight for a certain event, as soon as that event has happened, you're down in the Twinkies. Like, ah, the diet's over and I can go back to eating whatever I want. And that's not, that's not the point. Hey you, I have been working on a life project that I cannot wait to share with you. It has been a year and a half in the making. Kevin and I have been busting our tails, making it all work. And oh man, we're we're in the home stretch. I'm trying to prioritize my sleep. I am really focusing on my self-care routine in addition to just responsibilities. You know how it goes. And when we're really stressed out, we are burning through magnesium. 
burning through it. And so if your new year is like mine with deadlines and coordinating things, you need magnesium. Magnesium is responsible for over 300 body reactions and magnesium breakthrough is the only magnesium formula that delivers all seven different forms of magnesium each with its unique benefits. I started taking magnesium breakthrough from Bioptimizers probably about two years ago now, and it is the staple in my supplement cabinet, in addition to a couple of others that we've covered on the podcast in the past. So I'm taking magnesium breakthrough specifically for this crazy time in my life. And if you are just trying to balance your life demands too, I suggest you give it a try. You can go to buyoptimizers.com slash keto diet and use the code keto diet one zero for 10% off. Again, that's buy optimizers.com slash keto diet with the code keto diet one zero for 10% off your order. And so when it came to setting my goal and really it wasn't, it was just, I want to be stronger. I just want to have muscle on my body. And then when I felt consistent with my workouts, I started tracking my food. I started realizing, oh my goodness, I'm eating way too much fat. And then I thought, well, this could be fun. You know what I haven't done ever is eat enough and not eat a ton of fat. So since 2014, up until about 2021, 2022 there, I was keto and I was eating enough, mostly uh, sometimes too much, too much fat piece, but I was eating enough, but I wasn't working out. And so now I was working out a whole bunch and I thought like, what would happen if I lowered my fat, increased my protein a bit and jacked up my carbs. And so from about February to June, I ate like a lot, about 3000 calories a day and really bulked up while I was working out. I was developing a lot of muscle really quickly because I was eating so much. And even though I was eating that much, I was losing weight. I really wasn't paying attention. I could have cared less. I jumped on the scale. It, the little app just tracked it for me. And I didn't really pay attention to it until I started cutting calories. And then I realized, oh my goodness, I'm I went from 169, I think when I started cutting calories, I was at 150. So I had lost 20 pounds just working out and eating a lot. And so the movement piece is really important. I work with and have worked with many, many women that think that the diet piece is the most important. And if they could just figure out their diet, then they would start losing weight. I don't see that consistent with anything that I've seen over the last 15 years working with women. It really, really, really requires a mixture of walking or swimming plus weight training. Like no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If I had to choose a weight training that I find the most effective, I would just say lifting really heavy stuff. The body that it, quote unquote, the body that is hot right now, if you just think of that curvy, tight body that many women say that they want, That is achieved by, of course, having your macros dialed in, but also majorly having the movement dialed in. And yeah, I think so many of us think that if we just get the right macros, we'll get to that body. No, movement needs to be a part of it. If you're looking to change your body in any physical aspect, movement has to be part of it. If I had to choose a movement that's super accessible, that just about anyone can do in some capacity, it would either be swimming or walking a significant amount. And that can do wonders for weight loss goals, body recomposition. And that's another piece. So in a podcast episode previously, we talked about the difference between losing weight and recomping your body. And so when you have a weight loss goal, like my example, I was clearly holding a ton of body fat that really wanted off my body. I started moving. I lost about 20 pounds of body fat. Now, since cutting, that was June. So June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So about seven months of cut calories while maintaining muscle mass. So it's pretty easy to maintain muscle mass if you're working out and eating in a surplus. Okay. That muscle's not going to go anywhere. You're going to be able to build muscle, gain a little fat, those things. But when you're at maintenance or below in calories, you need to be mindful of A, 
your protein intake, B, your rest time, and C, your movement, okay? And so the sweet spot is when you're eating just enough that your muscle, that you're not losing muscle, okay? You're losing fat and in ideally gaining a little muscle on top of that. And so I found that the most successful for me and most of my clients is actually eating at maintenance with a movement goal. Ideally, the best movement goal you can have, the best, if you're asking me, Leanne, what is the best movement goal that you've seen develop the best kind of outcomes? I would say walking a significant amount, like minimum 8,000 steps, ideally 13,000 steps a day. And I just, I give a step goal because it's easier than saying walking two hours or two and a half hours. Generally speaking, it takes about 30 minutes to walk 3,000 steps at an average pace, like average, okay? The step goal piece, really big. The other key movement factor is at least three days lifting heavy things. So if you're setting up a three-day split, Probably the the one that I've seen the most effective is an upper body day, a lower body day, and then a full body day. Okay. So I would say that if you really want to change your body in 12 months, you're probably going to need to go more than three days a week, but three days a week is a really good place to start and be consistent at. Consistency is the absolute essential piece. If you go from you know, working out three days a week, every week in January to then one day a week in February, two days a week in March, one day a week in April. And then June rolls around, you're doing two days a week and you're expecting to see this momentous change. You're just not going to see it. Like you need to be consistent. So it's better because this is a life change that you set up a goal with your movement that you can actually stick to. So if you know that you cannot work out three days a week, then set it to one. And that's exactly what I did. I knew that if I wanted this to be a lasting change, there was no way I was going to go to the gym right on the outset. Like no way. I just, I hated the gym. I didn't want to be at the gym. Why would I go there? And I knew that if I worked out at home, I would actually do it. Okay, cool. So you got to know yourself enough to know when you're setting your movement goals, what is something you can actually do? Like you will actually commit to, and it's not that big of a leap. I knew that getting into the car at eight o'clock in the morning with a full belly of oatmeal and going to the gym for my first time ever was just not something I, I would do that would just, I would just not do it. Now I look forward to it. For the most part, there are days where I'm like, I don't want to be here. This is stupid. And then I finish and I'm like, wow, that was actually really great. But those are few and far between. But I I know that when setting your movement goal, you absolutely, absolutely need to think about consistency because your goals are not going to be achieved if you are not consistent. So I would say that the most ideal movement, again, is between eight to 13,000 steps and movement in the form of lifting heavy things at least three days a week, if not like five. And so again, it's the full body day, upper body, lower body. If you have more days than three and you're getting more and more consistent and you're adding in another day, a fourth day, then I would do upper, lower, upper, lower and give yourself at least two days rest between your both your lowers and at least one day rest between your uppers. So for example, it could be Monday is upper, Tuesday is lower, Wednesday is a break, Thursday is upper, Friday is lower, okay? So that you have enough space in between that to like really rest and recuperate. Another piece to your movement goal is rest. (laughs) So those like 30-day ab challenges where you're doing like an ab workout every day, stupid, don't bother. No, you need recovery. That's how you're gonna do this, slow recovery and being like very intentional with this. I dislike the term active rest. What does that even mean? It's like naming your vehicle a Dodge Ram. Are you dodging it? Are you ramming it? What are you doing? Active rest, same thing. Like, what are we doing here? No, it's either you're active or you're resting. It's not both. And so you should have at least like minimum one day where you are in full sloth mode. Ideally too, chances are you're a woman listening to this we need a little bit more rest than the men do. Okay. So just like embrace the sloth for two days a week. And it actually like lets you do your life. 
But I would say the key mistake that I see time and time and time and time again, and and I mean, my diet was pretty dialed in. I was at 169 pounds. I looking at pictures now, I'm like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, totally. I, I mean, that happened and my diet was dialed in. I just, I wasn't moving enough. And so if your diet approach does not have some sort of movement goal around it, you're probably not going to achieve as much as you could if you did both. Now that gets to the diet, you know, movement mentality, ideally you want to kind of do both at the same time. So perhaps you're thinking about really pulling your life together in 2024. I would say instead of thinking it like we talked about, instead of thinking of it like a a one-year goal, think of it like I'm going to pull my movement and diet together, period. Like I'm not going to make excuses. You know, my thing was, well, it's my birthday or it's a celebration or like I'll do it next week or or in some cases, like I'm super active. No, you're not. Like you're not active, Leanne. Like (laughs) you're not kidding anyone with this. You're not active. And so ideally you want to pair both diet and lifestyle in some capacity. So when it comes to diet, initially for myself, what I found really effective is focusing on one thing with movement and one thing with diet. Okay. Again, it's not a race to the finish line situation. If you do that, you're going to crash and burn. So my big thing was water. I was kind of sucking at making sure that I was having enough water. So that was the first goal is like, I'm going to make sure that I'm having my four bottles of water a day. Each bottle is 26 ounces. So that'll take care of that. Okay, so I'm really going to focus on water. I'm really going to focus on water and I'm going to focus on walking. And as I got more and more consistent with that, then I was like, okay, I know that eating two meals a day is not going to facilitate the energy that I need for my workouts. So I'm really going to focus on trying to have three square meals a day. And so I was drinking my water, doing my three square meals a day, and then I started my movement. Okay, so that was again, dumbbells in my house once a week. So you can progress like through your steps as opposed to it's January. I must go to the gym five days a week. I must have my diet perfect. You're going to crash and burn. There's no way that that is consistent long term. It's way too big of a change. Like I would say that I am pretty good with change overall, just looking at my life and seeing how much it changes you know, if I see a friend that I haven't seen in a while, they're like, so where are you living? What are you doing? What are you doing for work? Because it's always just shifting and changing. And so, but it doesn't happen overnight. It's this slow progression. And I find that that makes the sweetest changes when they're just, just this ever so slight shift, a one degree shift every day. And then all of a sudden you look past three months, you're like, whoa, that actually happened. When we keep our eyes on just one area, like for example, if you're jumping on the scale every day and you're like, okay, how did I do yesterday? Like, I feel like I ate so well. I've worked out. Oh my gosh, the scale is up two pounds. I suck. Like this will always be your default unless you change it. Chances are you've done this before. Chances are you've made these same goals before. And so we really need to do something different in order to actually change. Another piece to the lifestyle, I would more put this in like movement than diet is sleep. Now we know that the diet is going to influence sleep. Of course, for many eating too close to bedtime can affect our sleep and just the certain foods that we choose. Like for example, chocolate, if you're having it before sleep, you can have issues, those sorts of things. But primarily if you're having your rest days, okay, and you're not pushing yourself super hard, you should be able to take a good amount of rest, aka sleep every day. That's at least seven hours, ideally eight, but somewhere around the seven, eight mark is a really good goal. If you're waking up in the middle of the night or you can't sleep or you're going to bed too late or you're setting your alarm so you can get to the gym earlier, stop that. It's far more important to sleep so that you can recover, so that your brain can function properly through the glymphatic drainage of your brain. Um, if we are not getting enough sleep, our brains are going to be inflamed. And so it's really, really important to prioritize sleep above your movement. If your movement is super stressful and it's affecting your sleep, you got to pull back. The sleep is absolutely, absolutely essential to the entire, the entire piece. 
The ISSN, which is widely recognized as the authority on the latest cutting-edge non-biased information on sports nutrition, just announced their position on essential amino acid supplements, or EAAs, for muscle and performance. The paper goes into a bunch of benefits and supporting studies, but the biggest takeaway for me was reading that EAAs are more effective than protein at stimulating muscle protein synthesis. So if you're trying to put on muscle, if you're trying to lose weight and maintain lean muscle, or if you're getting older and worried about maintaining muscle mass, taking an EAA supplement is going to be one of the best things you can do for yourself. Enter Keon Aminos, an essential amino acid, meaning EAA supplement. I've been taking to boost my protein intake and assist my body with my recomp goals. Notice when I talked about that ISSN paper, the biggest piece here is that when we're losing weight, we want to make sure that we're also maintaining lean muscle mass. And that was a big, big goal for me when I set off on my weight loss journey in 2021. I didn't want to lose muscle and I actually wanted to gain muscle while I lost fat. Now, this EAA supplement from Keon is just a powder that you add to water, and it's a fabulous way to make an increase in your essential amino acids without loading your system with more and more and more food. So I started taking Keon aminos because I wanted muscle on my body. Now, protein is essential for that, but the essential amino acid powder is even more effective. Now, I take a scoop with each meal, and I've noticed far better recovery from my workouts and way better muscle definition. Your protein needs increase as you age, and I bet you're not getting enough protein even in your diet alone, and Keon is a great way to hit your essential amino acid needs. To save 20% on Keon Aminos, just go to getkeon, that's G-E-T-K-I-O-N.com slash keto to get my fundamental supplement for fitness, Keon Aminos. Again, that's getkeon.com slash keto. I would say another aspect that's really important as you think about changing your body in 2024 is the relationships that you have and the communication you have in those relationships and just really taking stock of where you can show up differently in individuals' lives. I was walking recently thinking about how much I enjoy entertaining individuals. I really enjoy having people over and cooking for them and taking care of them. And I haven't really been able to do that in the capacity that is my life right now. And hopefully very soon our life will be kind of in a different space and we'll be able to kind of share all the things that God is doing in our life over the last year and a half. There's just so many changes. And I was thinking of, again, slight changes one day at a time. Looking back over a year and a half, I'm like, whoa, this is a totally different life. But as I'm thinking about just missing entertaining people and caring for them, I got a text from friends saying, hey, come over. Like, we're having this thing. We would love to have you like bring whatever. And my instant reaction was like, I don't want to do that. It's like late. It's like 6 p.m. on a Friday. I, I just want to stay in and read my book and hang out. And so even just how I show up in relationships. I'm I'm literally walking, thinking about how I want to care for people more and be around people. And then a person asks me to hang out and I'm like, I don't, I would rather be at home by myself. Right. So just like taking stock of what your desires are versus what your actions are, like how you're acting that out. And so I caught myself in that little lie. I'm like, okay, so what is that about? What, what is that about? And so I, push myself. I'm like, you're going to Publix. You're going to get some little appetizer thing. You're going to make this. You're going to go. It's going to be great. And it was awesome. And so really taking stock in the relationship aspect, your communications, how you can show up in people's lives differently. I think (sighs) New Year's is unfortunate because oftentimes, especially in this space, the health and wellness space, it's often about the health and wellness of ourselves And something I notice that's far more joyful is starting to think about how we can be a gift to other people and what we can bring to them. And I think that ties really much in line with some of the goals you can set around your movement 
if you are physically able to care for aging parents or physically able to care for your husband or your children or your grandkids, all of a sudden, you know, you're able to care for them more so that your kids can go and have a date night and you're with your grandkids more um, and you're physically able to do that. That you are caring for yourself in a way that now you're able to physically show up in a different way for your family. And that is just such a gift. And if that is your goal, like I want to take care of my grandkids, then that's a great goal. And every time you have your little setbacks, you can think of your grandkids and it just fuels you more. And you're just excited to be able to show up for them in this different way. So I hope that feels different than maybe what you were thinking when you came into this episode or, or kind of how you've structured your 2024 goals. How can you think of others, how to serve them and how does that fall in line with the goals that you have? And do your goals need to shift in order to show up for people in a different way? I'm not sure I have much on the diet aspect. I mean, when do I ever, when am I ever silent about diet? When it comes to diet goals, I would say biting off more than you can chew bahaha, um, is definitely going to be an issue. I hope you guys can't hear my Doberman snoring on my lap. Every time I record, she's like right on me snoring. She's been very close. So if you're hearing snoring, it's, it's, it's my dog. So when it comes to diet, biting off more than you can chew, and again, making those drastic, ginormous changes, you're going to crash and burn. You're going to experience cravings. So something that I found super helpful as I was starting off, you know, shifting my macros and looking at more of a higher carb approach, just as I was working out more and felt like I needed more carbohydrates. They're not as high as a standard American diet by any means. I would still categorize them as low carb. I'm definitely not ketogenic right now. I don't feel like I need to be keto. Um, and so just taking inventory, like where do you feel you need to be? Where have you felt good in the past? Stop thinking about like, oh, well, this person says this and that person says that and blah, blah, blah. Where do you feel best? And not just physically, where do you feel best, but mentally. I know that I very much dislike macro tracking. I don't mind tracking what I eat, but I do mind controlling what I eat from the tracking. And I'll explain the difference. If I set macros for myself and I do have set macros for myself and I fall in line with them pretty often, I don't try to manipulate what I'm eating to fit my macros. And so I'll set my macros, like for example, 180 grams of protein, 165 grams of carbs, and like 70 grams of fat, and I'll set that goal. And then I'll track my food for the day and kind of just see where I land. And at the end of the day, I'm like, oop, I was over on fat, I was down on protein. Okay, tomorrow, I'm going to kind of shift things around a bit. And then I'll track that day and just kind of track what I'm eating. It's far less stressful than it is to like, how am I going to fit all this in? And how is it all going to work? And as you become more and more knowledgeable around the foods that you're eating and the macros that make up those foods, it becomes a lot easier to just know kind of what a meal should look like for you. But I think the biggest piece is just start tracking what you're eating. It doesn't take that long, seriously. Like it's maybe a couple of minutes a day where you just sit down. Okay, I had this much of this, this much of that, et cetera. So you can just get a feel for how much you're eating. And then there are really, really simple tracker or rather calculators online where you can calculate approximately how many calories you need per day on maintenance. And I think maintenance, if you're eating way, 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 way under that, maintenance is where you need to be for at least six months before you even try to lose weight. So you need to get to the maintenance space. And we've talked about this in other podcast episodes, how important it is to make sure that you are eating enough. Otherwise, you cannot down, you cannot lose weight on a metabolism that's so down regulated that there's no place for it to go. We've talked about this many, many times when it comes to body recomposition, we want to maintain muscle mass, we want to lose fat, the scale might not change at all. Okay, what we want to see is your body tightening your body being stronger. And how we facilitate that is through making sure that we're eating enough. If you're not eating enough protein or you're not eating enough in general, it's going to start affecting your muscle mass, which will affect your metabolism, which long term will just make you like gangly, but like not bulked up and it won't look right. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Like just, I want to say like skinny fat is kind of that look, 
of just no muscle mass. And I'm telling you, when I meet with a client and they explain what they want their body look like, how they want it to feel, it's a muscular body. It might not be six pack abs ripped kind of body, but what they're talking about is a toned muscle body. Okay. So muscle, absolutely essential. And if you want a regulated, healthy metabolism, muscle is the way to do it. So we need to make sure that we're eating enough. So if you calculate your maintenance and your maintenance is at 2000 calories and you're currently sitting at 1100 calories, you need to slowly work your way up to your maintenance amount. The best way to do this without totally spazzing out your system and especially your brain, because I think our brains are just like, no, I can't even, I'll gain so much weight and all the things you won't, is to increase your macro slowly, like 10 grams of protein extra per week. Like, for example, if you track your food and you find that you're sitting at 40 grams of protein per day, which is pretty standard for most women, and they think that they're eating a lot of protein and that's not a lot of protein. So uh, for week one, you would make your protein goal 50 grams and then week two, 60 grams and then week three, 70 grams, et cetera, et cetera, until you get up above 100 at least, ideally more than that. Um, and then you can start working on carbohydrates and then fat. Or you could do it just a little bit, like 10 grams of protein, carbohydrate, maybe five grams of fat, increasing it and just working your way up to those maintenance calories. Stay there for about six months while you work out and then start cutting back to a weight loss piece. You won't actually need to cut back that much if you waited long enough at maintenance. I promise you. I promise you. It'll just start shifting pretty quickly. At a 100 calorie deficit, you'll start to notice changes. The magic number for a deficit is 300. Oftentimes, I'm not going lower than that. And you can also use a deficit via walking, which is why walking is just so incredibly awesome, because it will slide you in that deficit without having to change too much about your food and, and restrict yourself too much. So I highly encourage you to look first at what you're eating, track what you're eating, just naturally in your natural habitat, how much food are you even eating? Give yourself one or two weeks doing that and then analyze the data. What are you sitting at for, for protein, carbs, fat? Then go on Google and type in calorie calculator, put in your details and understand what your maintenance calories are. And then make sure that you've been eating that way for at least six months. If you're like, girl, I've been eating way more than that. Then you can start to cut back a little bit. If you're like, whoa, I am way under that. Then you need to bump it up a little bit. Stay at that level for at least six months and then start dropping to a deficit of maximum 300. Well, you continue your movement at that point, you sh your movement should be like pretty good. Like you should be walking and lifting at least three days a week and kind of being consistent with that and it feeling pretty good. Um, and then you can go on to bigger and better things. So I know I chatted your ear off. I had a little bit to say about all the things. Um, if you have questions, probably the best way to reach me is through Instagram at Leanne Vogel. And because I'm kind of losing my voice a little bit, I'm going to cut it here. So I hope you have a great start to your 2024. I hope that something I shared in here was helpful and we will see you back here for another episode of the Keto Diet Podcast. Bye. Thanks for listening. Join us next Tuesday for another episode of the Keto Diet Podcast. Looking for more resources? Go to healthfulpursuit.com for keto meal plans, weight loss programs, low carb recipes, and oodles of free resources to get you going. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representation or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program. 